sponsored this um, STEM uh, because you know in the new economy science technology engineering and maths are critical and somehow we have to win their hearts as well as their minds if you catch them at this age in you know, the formative years it's the best opportunity you've got and Do you think that's how science works? Do you think you have to be persistent? If you yeah. guys had, if you guys because had Thomas Edison did make the light bulb straight away. I'm really happy because it's a primary school and I think a lot of the funding for supporting science has historically been in secondary schools. But I think that you need to get them in primary schools if you're going to make them go up to secondary schools wanting to learn science. You know, I came from a what is now known as a sink estate yeah. and all this sort of stuff. It drives me, really gets me angry. I don't think we should label children. So when they say, you know, this is a school in a deprived area, they're, they're deprived children, they're not. You know, they're children living in certain circumstances. Mm. But, but this school can give them an opportunity. So who came up with the idea? Do you feel you're having to be more scientific or more creative? Um, probably say more creative. Yeah, and then just kind of more fun. When I got to, to secondary school, well, to primary school and then secondary school, I kind of lost the spark that I had for being creative because our school didn't really focus on science, technology, and maths in that kind of exciting activities that you're getting to do outside. And so I just became demotivated and didn't really want to get involved in engineering and technology and science. And so when I got to secondary school, I um, basically didn't take the subjects that you know I could mean that I'd be an engineer and things. So I now want to work with these young people to make sure that they are focused, if they are passionate about engineering and science and technology and maths, that they do choose the right things. And you know, I want to be a part of helping them design their future. Yeah, like we're experimenting, we're like inventing something. This is wonderful because you only have to look at what's going out there to see that we've got a range of children with special educational needs, a range of language capabilities, and a huge range of ages who don't normally work together, all actively engaged in working creatively on science. Yeah, that's excellent. I'm never one for tagging things, you know, oh, you're doing science now, you're doing maths now. Mm -hmm. You're doing something that's different, creative, and what, you know, what, why call it anything? It doesn't matter if it's art or science or, or whatever. It's just, just creating the opportunity for them to express themselves. I mean, we're being encouraged all the time to build creative curriculum and cross-curricular mm. links and creative curriculum. That's the way that teaching is being encouraged to go. And I keep telling all the teachers I work with that science is the subject that will allow you to do that because it's possible to bring literacy, maths, art, design. Oh, everything comes into science. It is the true cross-curricular subject. I started in a school almost exactly the same as the school you're in. I determined that someday I would be involved with cars. My strong advice to you is don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Because if you want to, you can and you will. I've been and lived all around the world by making motor cars. I would never have been able to do that if I hadn't found that little spark and if one of my teachers hadn't Turn that spark into a huge flame. Three, two, 
one, go! Five seconds. 